So the question here from Nav, $5 super chat. Thank you, Nav. Said advice on getting a node and running it. I hear start nine is good. I have an old Mac Air. Can I run a node on it? Do you guys have much experience with this? Um, so for me, I, I literally just, I, I've been running a node for a long time just on my computer, literally the computer I'm using right now. Um, and I just switched over from Bitcoin Core to Knots. Took two days to download the full blockchain. I just connected it to Sparrow. It's incredibly easy. And you can do that with a Mac as well. So you might you might be able to run it on an old Mac Air. Um, depends on probably the hard drive space is going to be your limiter there um, because MacBook Airs are pretty compact. So I don't know what kind of hard drive you have. That's probably going to be your limitation, but you might you could get an external hard drive. SSD would probably be the, the way to go on that. And you could run it on a device like that, or you could get a dedicated server, like something like a Start9 uh, would be another way to do it, which is... It's, it's basically a Linux computer with Start9 OS on it. Um, again, you can build all these things yourself. It's pretty easy. It's it, it, What I just did with running my own node is like the easiest possible way you could do it. And I, do, I will have a video coming out soon. It's you download one thing, you type in one thing, it's connected, you're running your own node. Um, again, Volatarism or whatever that guy's name is, is talking about how un, unfriendly, how hard it is to run a node. It is not hard to run a node at all it can so be easy. it can be more difficult you can go down and do all sorts of different things but to run a very simple node it is so easy i yeah, think you can do it with like a hundred dollars worth of equipment no yeah yeah you can do it off a raspberry pi and a, mm -hmm. an old hard drive um yeah that, that'll work for a certain amount of time potentially again that uh, the hardware might become a limitation if you if you go on the cheaper end at a certain point in in the future yeah, I got, I got a couple different thoughts on this. I'll, I'll give you my experience so far and, and my journey through Bitcoin. So I basically, I went about four years, three and a half, four years before I started running a node myself, which you might say that is too long. And you'd probably be fair to say that. I'm kind of under the opinion, though, if, if you're first getting into Bitcoin, I think your money is much better spent actually just buying Bitcoin. I think that there's a, enough stuff to learn within Bitcoin, both buying it, securing it, sending it, receiving it, all that stuff. There's so much to know. And I think that, you know, as Bitcoin continues to go up and up and up, I just think that your money is better spent buying Bitcoin right now. Once you get through a couple of years, I mean, there's there's people who pick this stuff up quicker than I would. And that's kind of what I was going to say to volunteerism too. There is like, if I can do it, like the most non-technical guy on the planet, can set up a node, then anybody can do it. It's super simple. And maybe just to kind of step back a bit, for anybody out there who's watching the show that doesn't really know what running a node means, it's basically just downloading a copy of the Bitcoin ledger onto your computer. That's hmm. like the, a very simple way to put it. Every transaction that has ever happened since January 3rd, 2009, you have a copy of all those transactions that gets downloaded to your computer. And so that's how people verify it. That's how the transactions are validated. It helps secure the network. That's why it's so decentralized. That's why it's immutable. Because if you wanted to make a change to one of the transactions, you'd have to go to every single node around the planet and ask them to make that change, which isn't going to happen. So th that's what I would say is don't rush into it. It's definitely a very important part of Bitcoin. I will not understate that, both for privacy and decentralization of the network. Um, and I have a start nine here that I've been running and I was able to figure it out quite easily. Um, if anybody's out there, I'm just sharing a link right here in the chat. You can go check out startnine.com and you can use code uh, 88 sats and get like 50 bucks or 60 bucks US off of your purchase. So I would say that you don't have to do that. As these guys mentioned, there's much cheaper ways to do that. The start nine is fairly expensive. But the reason why I got to start nine personally is because you can do different things with it too. There's a, it's basically your own server. So yeah. it's more private. Uh, you, I store my passwords on there. I buy and sell Bitcoin on there through RoboSats, which is connected privately through my server. And I also kind of understand and, and see where everything's going here. And so I just want to familiarize myself with the server because I think it actually is going to be a, a massive part of being sovereign in the future. As, mm -hmm. as we kind of shift away from all these big corporations stealing our data, that data that we... That we um, you know, we visit a website, we make a purchase. In the future, we're going to be able to send all that data to our own servers instead of it going to like a centralized Twitter or YouTube or Google. We're going to be able to get that 
information ourselves. And we're actually going to be able to sell that data to companies. Wh whatever we want to sell, we can kind of package it together and sell it for Bitcoin in the future. That's kind of what I see. That's my vision of the future. And so I just kind of want to get ahead of that and familiarize myself with, uh, with the server. So that's why I bought it. Yeah, good call. Um, Nav had a follow-up super chat here for $2. Oh. Uh, node needed for cold storage. I hear mixed things. Um, it isn't needed for cold storage. It's just you're using somebody else's node if you're going to be transacting. So again, what Jor mentioned there was uh, sovereignty and running your own node uh, increases your, your self-sovereignty. So it, you're running your own node. You're not asking for per permission from anybody th through using their node. You're not broadcasting it through their node. You're broadcasting it through your own. So there's some privacy there but it isn't needed. It's just recommended. And of course it's, it's more advanced. Um, and yeah, all that, right. Basically what we've said as well, continued on yeah. there. The, the I think one, at the end, at the sorry, end of the ahead. day though, at the end of the day though, I don't know if it's really, I mean, you, you can run a node. You probably should run a node if you want your own self sovereignty, but we have blockchain explorers like mempool for a reason. Those, those blockchain explorers are constantly being looked at by people all around the world. I, I saw a mistake on mempool one day and somebody tweeted about it. I wouldn't have known unless they tweeted about it, right? So people are constantly looking, they're constantly comparing their node to mempool because the incentive is to make sure that the entire world has the same record of transactions. So if there's a mistake on mempool, somebody's going to point it out. I think at this point, I mean, you could, you should run a node, you could run a node, but at this point, I think the new people who aren't running nodes, I think they're fine without running a node, although it would be better, of course, to support the network, to give the network more support, to make sure that um, there are more records of the transaction. So it's harder and harder to to lie. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say to that too is, um, yeah, yes, in terms of verifying the transactions, verifying the fact that you actually do have the UTXOs that are in your wallet, that's that's kind of what Rajat was alluding to there, which can be done on mempool, which is very uh, well maintained. That's not really the the issue that that I would say for a lot of people. The issue that I would be concerned with is that when you're connected to a public node, uh, every time you send a transaction, they get the information from your wallet. And with that comes your XPUB. And if your XPUB gets leaked somehow, that, that's a problem. Because even if you're going through the, the best practices of privacy of sending it to a different wallet address every time, if your XPUB gets exposed through that public server, then they now can see your whole balance within that wallet. Yeah. So it just, it just adds a layer of com complexity and trying to manage and be more private. Whereas if you're connected to your own server, your own node, there's nobody that has access to, to your XPUB unless you kind of expose that to somebody yourself. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's that's a great point. 